day to all of you. I, I was thinking to say good evening or good morning. For me, it's morning now, but when you're listening this, it could be on another point of the day, but uh, I'm, I'm very glad I could participate on this recording. My name is Eric Wiers. I'm the new Flemish uh, government architect. Uh, I just started, I'm almost in office a year now. And I'm going to tell you something about the work of the Flemish government architecture, how me and my team uh, try to support architectural quality in Flanders. And maybe I also will reflect a little bit on what has happened the last 20 years, but I think everything will become clear when I started. So uh, what is a government architecture? The, the Flemish government has, has wrote an, a mission and it says that he has to improve and promote architectural quality of the built environment. Um, it's not only about buildings, it's also about public space, about infrastructure, and even about parts of the landscape. Um, there are two main tasks which are pointed out by the government. The first task is to support and guidance public commissioners. So it can be the Flemish government, but it also can be all uh, local authorities. And the second task is to contribute to visioning and reflection of architectural quality. So we can put on the agenda different, uh, <clears throat> different aspects of architectural quality. Um, I'm now the sixth in line. The first uh, government architect was Bob van Reet. You see them all here uh, after we had Marcel Smits. Bob van Reet is the one who started with the open call, who really uh, initiated most of the instruments we're still using today. I'll, I'll be talking on about that uh, later. Uh, after him, Marcel Smith, so who's more an, an urbanist than an architect. What was important about him is that he, um, he really put uh, infrastructure on the agenda. He said the Flemish government architect, when he thinks about architectural quality, it's not only about the public buildings the government um, builds or the local authorities. It's also about um, uh, railways and, and, and all sorts of infrastructure. So it's very interesting that he put that, that on the agenda together with some landscape, uh, uh, some, some landscape programming. Um, since that day, we see that also there's a lot of master planning in the open up group uh, as well. And then Peter Swinney, he, he really focused on, on I, I would say he focused on research by design. And he, did, he initiated some, some, some bigger long term investigations about architectural quality. Yeah, Stefan de Voldre, because we had then the issue that the government didn't uh, want it a government architect anymore. And uh, I think he saved the institution. He was only there for a year, but uh, he was the second, the second uh, of uh, Peter Swinne. And when Peter Swinne was uh, stopped, then he uh, sort of saved the institution. And then Leo van Broek, uh, he very, very much, he was, he made the Baumeister, uh, which is good and bad at the same time, sort of a popular figure in, in, in uh, Flanders. He was very much into the media, but he, he really initiated the idea which of course all specialists know for a long time that there's a very big uh, connection between the way we build in Flanders, between, between our, the sprawl of our urban situation and the climate change issues. He really connected those things for, for a, a bigger public and that was really important. And now uh, 
I'm very much associated with all the things that 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 are about climate and climate change. It's, the media is very focused on on that issue. So my task will be also to focus again on architectural quality and spatial quality. This is the team uh, where uh, I have a team of 15 people, which is interesting is that this team, um, the, 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 the team doesn't change when the government architect, they always get every five years, they get a new government architect, but the team is, uh, is the same. And some of the people are working there already for 20 years. They, they work there from from Bob van Reet's time. You can see the table and the chairs are design of Bob van Reet. So they, they, his, his ghost is still in the atelier. What's, what's very important about the team, um, uh, it's very fem uh, fem female team. There's, there's a lot of uh, women, more women than men. And what's also very important is Together they have, I think, about 150 years of experience. So it's really important that they know, they really know the way how you can help a local, uh, a local authority to build a beautiful building. They, there's an, a lot, a lot of knowledge in the team. And it, for me, it's incredible, incredible to, to come into this team and to I learned really in the last year, I really learned a lot about uh, from the team. It is our atelier. So um, beside our offices of the Flemish government, we have an atelier. And it's very important that we are visible, that the Baumeister is visible in the street and it's in an old shopping area between the central station and the bazaar. Bozar is an important cultural um, player in Brussels. Um, and when you walk from the from the central station to the Bozar, you're passing our atelier. Uh, and we try to do all the juries and all uh, meetings uh, there so that 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 the Baumeister really is in the city and you can pass by and see that they're working there on, on architectural quality in Flanders. That's the, the idea. So in this uh, more than 20 years, we developed a lot of instruments and alliances. The, the most known is the open call. We also have a lot of advices and juries and, and customers guidance where People can, every everyone who has a, a public or semi-public profile can call us and ask us for, for guidance and, and for help with uh, putting out a, a commission or, or, or making a, a building or something that has to do in a broader sense with architecture. We have a master class. I will go into that. We have the award with Wiener de Meester. It's important because it's an award for commissioners, not for architects. We have pilot project. We have this Laborante laboratory, which is important. We have the Baumeester label. And also we do a lot of communication. We have a lot of small talks in the atelier debates. And we make a lot of publications. We have somebody special specialized in publications. We, She's very good at it. Um, so in, in, in general, with all those instruments and alliance, we, we try to, uh, to work on architectural quality daily. So I'll, I'll get into these instruments a little bit so you get an idea of <clears throat> all the things we use to, to support architectural quality. One thing is the meesterproof. Um, <clears throat> it's an opportunity for young architects. Um, every two years, we have an edition where we try to, to uh, give young architects their first uh, public commission. So we're looking for some smaller public uh, commissions. 
uh, and then we look for architects, young architects, we make a selection and we connect them. And so we do little competitions and, and we try to, to, uh, to help them to do their first uh, public assignment. Um, it's interesting for them also to acquire a reference project and, and really get get the start in their in their architectural practice because a lot of young architects in Belgium they're very much into private uh, housing and, and and development and it's interesting for them to to make their first step into um, a commission of, of a public uh, building. In 2017, we focused on reaffection of heritage. In 2019, we had an addition of focusing on social housing, and we decided to do that again because there's a lot of uh, uh, a lot of work in social housing in in Belgium. They have enormous uh, waiting lists when you want to. I think now when when you when you're in need of uh, of a social house in Belgium. I think the lists are about four years. You have to wait for you get appointed in the home. So there's it's a, a really big issue, and we try to we try to find some social housing companies that have some smaller projects, and we try to connect them with these young uh, designers uh, to help them uh, to get their first uh, assignment. Uh, the award we win at the Meester, it's an award for public commissioners, and I think it's important because in the ghost of the government architecture from the first government architecture, he, uh, Bob Fahed always said to get good architecture, you need a good answer, but you also need a good question. And he really focused on the fact that if the Flemish government would... Uh, would like to have some qualitative architectural project, then they would be, then they would start to be a, a qualitative commissioner. They, they, they should also the quality of the question should raise, he always said. And that's why we have this, this award for public commissioners. So, and these are some, some awards, uh, who I some some project that got the award uh, years ago. It's also it's always an, an an a project where the the role of the of the of the the local authority is very important. Um, we can we do some some um, pilot projects. We initiate them ourselves on urgent, important issues. Uh, we have done a lot of things. And very, in, very important is that, that, that we try to have an impact on the rules, on the legislation, and, and that we end in built projects. So we did some, some pilot project about elderly care, about collective housing, about art, agriculture, art, conversion of brownfield student housing during the years uh, we did it. And also we try to, to search not only to do a good qualitative project so we can, so everybody can see, look, this could be like uh, collective housing. Um, but also we try to find out um, which, which things we, we encounter on our, on our road to the, towards a qualitative project that could be changed with, with, with legacy or could be changed by, by the government. So we try to find out which problems uh, are important so that we can advise, because this is a very much, very important role of the Flemish government architect. He should, invite, he should advise the government of changing some rules that are in the way of, uh, of qualitative architecture. Uh, another uh, pilot project we started uh, some time ago is 
Leefbuurten in Dutch. I, I, I translate literally in living neighborhoods. It doesn't sound as good as Leefbuurten, but you get the picture. What we want to do, we ask, um, we do a call. All Flemish uh, local authorities can, can, um, can apply for the call. And we, we selected seven Flemish, Flemish uh, cities or villages. And we asked them if they have in their plans, and they always have the budget, and they're really planning to, to reconstruct some public space. It can be the marketplace, but it can be uh, a, a, a local neighborhood or, or, or any, any spot at all. And we asked them, we, we try to help them to raise the ambition. We have some experts. We have an expert on landscape and water and all the, all the things concerned with climate. We have an expert on, on traffic. We have an expert on participation. We pay those experts by the, the, the government architect uh, uh, and his team. And we help, uh, we have, an, an, um, we have a, a process manager, I would say. We, we, we found someone, an architect, uh, who could help us by, by uh, guiding all those those uh, projects and learn from it and so we support because we we found out that this support this support is very important we support these local governments this um with those uh, experts to raise uh, the ambition of their reconstructing public space and we have three main ambition we want to we want to have less car traffic. We want climate adaptation, and we want to stimulate the encounter of the people that live there. We want the public space to be a place where people can encounter each other that that people can use as part of their living area. Um, and it's very very important. It's it's really uh, this is important to point out what really is the role of the government architect. Our team tries to, the, the money is there anyway, the plan is anyway there to change the public space, but we only try to raise the ambition. There's another, um, another pilot project we started, it's called uh, Dorpelijkheid. It's even more difficult to translate because the word doesn't exist in, 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 in Dutch as well. I would translate like villageness. I don't know if it's even a word, if it's even understandable in English, but we, we're trying to look what is, what is the, the, the atmosphere of a village. Because we have a lot of mayors that, that call upon us and they say, well, the, the spirit and the character of my village is disappearing. Because in the center of my village, all those developers start to build apartment blocks. And so uh, the character of my village is, is going to waste. And we are asking ourselves, what is it? When, when we are traveling through Flanders, we don't see much character. We, we think all those villages look alike. So we try to find out what is it these people are missing? What is there that, that, that's going away? And the main idea is to have, um, to design some, some new buildings that are uh, associated with the character of the village. But first we try to find out what is this character everybody seems to be losing. So in the first step in this investigation, we, we asked an artist of, photographer and a reporter to look for the meaning of Dorpelijkheid. We asked them to make uh, the, I think the artist will make a, a big maquette, but the photographer of course will make photographs or they will make a film and they will make an exhibition to, to point out what is the quality of this village. What is the, the, the character of a village? 
in a very broad sense, not only in an architectural sense, but in, in, in the broader, like in a mental sense almost. And then we will, we will use this exhibition to have the discussion with the local, local, local authorities. And then maybe we'll have a masterclass with students. And after that, we'll try to, to put up real pilots, real projects of somebody building in a village and trying to build more within these character or atmosphere that we're looking for. So this is a whole project that will last some years uh, to, to tackle this issue about the, the losing character of, uh, of uh, villages. Another thing we have for several years is labo ruimte. Literally, it means labo space. It's a laboratory for research, and it's really the research on a larger scale. It's a collaboration between the Baumeister and the Urban Planning Agency of Flanders. So um, we really made an, an agreement that they would put a lot of money into this uh, into this labo, and every every year we're looking for new teams and. Um, we try most of the of the project uh, last for a few years, and and the underlying concern is how to evolve towards a more durable society. It's are always long term uh, investigations on a big scale. Um, it's also transversal uh, a crossover between disciplines. It's not only architecture but also other technical or scientific uh, issues. And it's always a combination between design and, and research. We did a very, um, very known uh, lab some years ago with Peter Swine. He did about the coastal system. He tried to look on when, when the level of the sea would raise in 2000 with several meters, what coastal, uh, urbanization would that demand and they made a total new 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 plan and all all flanders panicked when they saw the images because it was of course not 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 the idea to do it the next day but but it was kind of frightening to see uh, half of the country underwater and then and then these huge buildings uh, uh, between them we did something about circular city, about lowlands, climate neighborhoods. These are things that are going on now is research about climate neighborhoods. There are we trying to look how we could tackle, um, uh, how we could uh, to insulate and to, to to optimize the, the way we, we organize the heating, not only of one building, but of a, of a whole neighborhood, looking for, for ecological ways to, to tackle these problems. We have this huge research about metropolis. It's very interesting. It's a research that looks how we could change the railway system in Flanders so it would be connected with the idea of which cities in the future will develop in density and which will not. Because now there are some big ideas on an urban scale about densifying some of the cities. And on the other hand, the, the railway system is always changing and thinking about what would be the most efficient uh, transport uh, installation, but they never connect to each other. So in, if we look in the future, it could be that the railway system thinks of Louvain, for instance, as an important station, but that the urban planners didn't plan to, to let uh, Leuven grow. So. I think it's it's very important that we want to put on the agenda, and and we always we 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 talked already with the railway people, and they were really like, oh yeah, we never thought about the connection between the development and the city and the situation of the rail because 
it's all fragment, fragmented in, into, uh, in the government. So it transports something totally different from urbanity. So that, that's also on a bigger scale, the idea of how we try to, to, um, to initiate some, some problems in, in, and some issues on, on a higher uh, governmental level. This is also an interesting um, instrument we have. It's called Baumeister Label. Label is the same in English. It's a small research. Um, we giving a we we do a call every two years, and everybody can apply on one A4 paper. You can write out an investigation you want to do. It can be anything. We get some surprising results. Um, the goal is that we that that we help them to to initiate the investigation and we try to put up a lecture or an exhibition and we try to put it on the agenda and this is for instance the latest call one of the an architectural office of antwerp they uh, the title was sources of encounter and they want to look how in a city there there are a lot of uh, rivers and 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 water um, there's a lot, there's a problem with water, of course, and there are a lot of rivers that are covered and are lying underneath the city. And what if we would reopen some of these water spots, we could use them for collecting uh, an overload of, of rainwater, but we could also make them um, a point of encounter. So that's why, that's why the title is Sources of Encounter, that one, the, the climate issues about water in the city. And secondly, the idea that people should be more um, meeting each other on the public space. They put those two things of social and, and, and ecological problem, they put it together and, and they want to do an investigation about that. And I think these kinds of research we find uh, very, very interesting and we support them to put them on the agenda. And some of the formal, formal researches, there, there's been research about greenery in prisons. And now we convince the government to put it in their, in their, um, in the, in the assignment when they're building a new, uh, a new prison in the project definition there will be um, a sort of, um, there will be a project that with the prisoners together, they try to make sort of a garden instead of uh, this, this very uh, concrete uh, places you always see in prisons when, when, they, when people, uh, they, they can do a little walk. It's always on this, on this very harsh uh, concrete, uh, uh, courtyards, there are never any greenery. And they did this, 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 some real project and some exercise with groups of prisons that could together maintain a garden. And now the government has written it in their project definition for the new, uh, for the new prisons in Flanders. So I think that's, that's the whole idea of what we could reach with this Baumeister label. Okay, uh, opinion and sensibilization, of course, uh, we, we try uh, to, to put some is issues on the agenda. I, I also made um, an ambition note, which is, I think, a very beautiful uh, little booklet. Um, you can, you can uh, get it for free. They will send you an, uh, a copy if you wrote to the Baumeister Flamse Baumeister, www.flamsebaumeister.be. Um, and there you can get a, a, a copy for free. It's, it's a, I think it's a very beautiful uh, booklet. You, I would really like a lot of people to read. And then there I try to, the eight main issues for the future of architectural quality where I try to talk 
and put on the agenda and which I will try to put on the agenda for the next five years. So uh, to, to end, I will say something about the open call. The open call in Flemish, the open oproep, is one of the main en- instruments of the government architecture. And um, it's important because a lot of British architects are participating in the open call. And so I will talk a little bit about about this to explain to you uh, what it's exactly about. Since 2000, more than 300 built public projects are uh, organized uh, or are already um, built uh, of, as a result of an open call. So Bob Feirheid, the first uh, Flemish government architect, he introduced the policy of the open call. Um, what was very important, um, first, uh, he wants to put diversity for the public procurement and to focus on um, different architectural approach, including young and international architects. That was really an intention from the beginning. When we do an open call and we, we, we look for five uh, participants, Bob always said, <coughs> <coughs> sorry, should be at least be one young architect and one foreign architect. Um, a lot of effort will go into the project definition. We will try to put in a cultural and social ambition and not only a program. And what's really um, important is it's not a traditional architectural competition, it's a process. It's a collaboration of a design team and a commissioner, and that's very important. And we choose a team with an appropriate first design and vision, not the final design. And as Bob always said from the beginning, we choose a designer and not a design. I think it's very important that there's a sort of a click or a sort of a, an agreement between the commissioner and, and, and the designer. The result is that we really have a new architectural culture in Flanders. In the in the single <clears throat> in October this year, there's a, a traveling exhibition of the open call, 20 years open call. It will end in the single this year. And there you can see uh, it's a it's an exhibition about the process of the open call with a lot of examples. And you will see that in the last 20 years, really the architectural culture in Flanders changed uh, thanks to this, 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 this instrument. Um, but also the debate on architecture quality really began. Um, to get more an idea into detail, I'll, I'll look quickly into 10 steps of the open call. So first, um, the contracting authority consults with the government architecture about the project to realize. So they really make an agreement with the government architect. Okay, we will go uh, through through the open call for this project. We will work uh, together. Then, the team of the Flemish government architecture and the contracting authority tailor, tailor the procedure to the assignment. They really make a contract and we're going to through this procedure together. Um, this is important. The team of the Flemish government assists the contracting authority in drawing up a solid and well-founded project definition. And that's very, very important because a lot of those local authorities, they don't have any experience with, with sometimes they even don't have experience with architectural quality or, or with new architecture. And so it's very important that we help them to, to, to formulate the question 
that we help them to raise the ambition and to say to them, Ma, if you want a library, maybe you should think about what would you do with those parking lot in front of the library? Maybe it can be more green or maybe you should. And we really help them uh, to, to think about things they don't think about in, 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 the, first, in the first view. The second step, we launch an appeal to designers. It's twice a year. We do an open upgroup call and you get several uh, uh, several uh, commissions and then you can, you can candidate for these commissions. Sometimes when it's um, a master plan that we only have 15 uh, candidates, but sometimes it's more than 50 or 60 candidates for, for one building. Um, okay, national and international design teams apply with a portfolio and a short motivation text. We try to keep that very open. For instance, when we want to build a fire station, we will never ask you um, to give references of other fire stations. We want young architects that never build a fire station um, give the chance to, to, to build one because otherwise quality in the long run wouldn't exist. If, if only people that have built a fire station will build a new one yeah, in 20 years, there will be no, no one left that, that could build. And there will be no renovation in the idea of how a fire station could be. We, we see in the open call that a lot of time, uh, it, it happens a lot that the the team, the young team with the less experience uh, wins the competition because they have an, an, a whole new view on, on the, they, they look at it with an open view and they have a whole new idea about, for instance, the fire station. And, and sometimes the commission is very, very pleased with that and they win the competition. So it's important that, that the, uh, the way of, of participate is, is very low profile. Then we make a, a qualitative pre-selection about 10 teams and when the 15. Um, oh, I think I skipped. So we, we make a selection of 10 and together with the contracting authority, we retain it to five. So we discuss, okay, this five or, or sometimes never less than three, sometimes three, four, it depends on. We also ask the local authority to pay all the participants. That's in the contract in front when you, when you uh, step in the procedure of the open up you you agree that you will pay the architect which is not for every local authority they uh, it, it it's not always a, a common practice for them then they organize two briefings on the site it's important also that designers can look and ask questions and in the first briefing, they, they, they get the final, um, the final project definition and they can ask already some, some questions, see the site and then, and then they start to study. And a month later, we revisit the, sty the, the site so they have some particular questions and, and the authorities will answer them. It's important for the process to have those, those uh, those two briefings uh, on, on, on site. Uh, they, 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 of course, they submit the draft uh, design and then uh, they explain their vision uh, to a jury and the jury is always, I try to participate always in the jury and we, from the team of the government architect, we choose one expert and then there's some people from, from the local authorities. Uh, but we look for the fact that we have a good mixture, that there are not more people from the local authorities than external experts, but we have a good uh, balance. And it really helps because the, the juries I, I did now, a lot of times the 
the public commissioner wants another project than the experts. And then you have an interesting discussion about architecture and it really helps since we do the whole process and we help them to, to formulate the question, then we can recapture during the jury, we can say, but do you remember that we were looking for somebody who was this and that? And maybe this office will, will give us the best, uh, give us the best result. And, and then they, they start to think that, that architect, architecture quality is something else than only that, they, that, that it's beautiful for them or not beautiful for them. You really help them to, to, um, to develop their, their, their vision on architectural quality. It's really interesting to, to see. Okay, the jury evaluates the, the proposals and selects a winner or preferred tender. And then uh, it's it's and then normally the 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 help of the the, the of the support of the government architecture stops. Then the local authority has to make a contract uh, with the preferred tender, and and they start uh, they start the commission. Sometimes we choose, uh, we do that more and more that the expert we have on this particular uh, project, we let them follow up a few more times so that we know that there will be no um, erosion, I don't know if that's a good English word, of the architectural quality, that the architectural quality that was promised uh, in the, in, by the jury or promised uh, by the competition that it will be still be in the project when it's developed more technically. So sometimes our, our experts do some follow up to, it's, it, to, um, to attain the promised uh, architectural quality. I have some, at, to end, I have some, a few examples of you see, when you see the open call 0408, it must be like 2003 or something. We are now on call 41. This is call four. So every half year, that's, that's, uh, that um, fits with uh, 20 years. It's one of the first, uh, one of the first uh, buildings. These of Noah Architects was a very important one, but for the first time in Flanders, they they saw that uh, modern architecture could 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 fit in or could be in harmony with an existing uh, with an existing building, and that was that was important to that you could uh, that you could build further, that you could build upon the existing thing and make make relation with the existing uh, building. It's been an important step. Uh, call 06 in NVRE, so elderly care. This is also an important uh, in Vigano in Antwerp. They, they made the cover of, of, of a square, which is a very, very nice working public space today. An interesting uh, reused chapel, also 14 already. Also infrastructure, you see this food bridge in Ghent, also on an open call. Other things like a water tower can also be uh, organized through an open call. This, the library in Ghent, uh, very big public building, uh, very known public building uh, called 18. But also sometimes master planning or more and more the master plan uh, questions in the in the open call. This is in Pures and this is one of the latest beautiful uh, beginage in Hasselt of Bovenbau architecture. The architectural school will enter in this building. They made a really beautiful uh, approach about it. So uh, this is my last uh, slide. I hope when you're in Brussels 
and you're passing from the central station to Bozar, and you see me standing in the atelier, you're very welcome to have a coffee. We have very good coffee in the atelier. So uh, everybody's very welcome to, to visit. And I hope that in the future still, uh, a lot of uh, British architects will uh, will tender and will 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 participate in our open calls because they're do, they're doing it right now and I hope they will they will keep on on doing that because so we could help all together to to raise architectural quality in in Flanders. Thank you very much. At Brickworks van der Mortel, we make high quality bricks, slips and clay pavers in unique colors and sizes. With sustainability as one of our key values, we created a brand new high-end brick lab, allowing us to innovate in an eco-friendly way in the various parts of our company and the building solutions we provide. Building further on the sustainable initiatives we already had, such as maximum transport by boats reducing transport emissions, minimizing production waste and reusing it in the production process, and our ecological brick sizes, our new building runs on solar energy, parking spaces are water permeable, and we planted more than 200 trees. With the Green Deal in mind, we believe in ecological and circular building solutions, which meet the highest design standards of today. All this without losing our passion that we would love to share with you.